Welcome everyone, my name is Robies and today I bring you a new episode of Assassin's Creed The Real History, the series where we compare the representations of characters, factions, events, and locations depicted within one of the Assassin's Creed games to their actual history. Please be warned of major story spoilers ahead. For today's episode, we'll be exploring the history of the French politician and nobleman L'Honoré Gabriel Ricotti, Comte de Mirabeau, also known simply as Mirabeau. To start, we will explore his background during his pre-game history, then we will cover his appearances in Assassin's Creed Unity during his in-game history, and lastly we will summarize the differences between his representation in the game and his actual life. Starting with the pre-game history, Gabriel was born in Le Bignon, France on March 9, 1749, to Victor de Ricotti, Marquis de Mirabeau, and Marie Geneviève de Vassin. Around the time when he was three, Mirabeau contracted smallpox, which caused some disfigurement on his face. In his youth, he was sent to a boarding school and later a military school, eventually leaving in 1767 with a commission in the cavalry regiment. Around this time, a scandal arose where Mirabeau wrote love letters to and is said to have had a scandal with Marie-Thérèse de Monnier, referred to as Sophie, who was romantically connected to his colonel. For this, under order of a lettre de cachet, Mirabeau was sent to prison in l'île de Ré. After being released, he took part in an expedition to Corsica and later married a wealthy heiress, Marie-Marguerite-Émile de Covet, in 1772 by bribing her servants to let him into her room, insinuating a romantic liaison, which pressured her father to marry them instead of dealing with the scandal. They soon lived in exile as Mirabeau could not provide an expensive lifestyle, and soon after, a man insulted his sister, which started a fight, eventually leading to Mirabeau's imprisonment in the Chateau d'If in 1774. In 1775, he was kept in technical imprisonment, where he met the woman he was originally writing his letters to. It is said they fell in love and ran away together to Switzerland. In 1777, Mirabeau was captured and returned to France, where he was arrested via lettre de cachet in Vincennes under the charges of sedition and abduction. Here, he met the Marquis de Sade. However, despite both being authors of erotic material, they hated each other. Mirabeau was released in 1782 from prison, where it is said he truly improved his writing and speaking skills, and soon after, his wife separated from him in the same year. Mirabeau also fought his charges, with which he would have been penalized with the death penalty, and acting as his own representation, he was successful. Using this momentum, he participated in a suit before Parliament, and after displaying an aggressive presentation against the government, he fled Paris and returned to the Dutch Republic to hide. He eventually went to England, where he was admired for his writings against the use of the Lettre de Cachet, and where he learned even more about political society. After settling his situation in France, he returned to Paris, looking for work, but soon began denouncing certain banks for what he saw as financial misdeeds. In 1786, he went to Berlin and later wrote a book denouncing the Prussian court and attacking some of its prominent figures. Over these past few years, Mirabeau had also been contacted by both Benjamin Franklin and Thomas Jefferson, who seemed to admire his work and offered him some materials with which to work. Despite wanting a position in political employment, his continued publication of works attacking the current political and financial structure of the country prevented him from succeeding. It would be at this point where we first briefly met Mirabeau in Assassin's Creed Unity, as Arnaud accidentally walked in on the meeting of the Estates General in 1789. Historically, Mirabeau was one of the representatives for the Third Estate, who eventually came to be a leading figure as many people feared him and yet still put their faith in his words. Despite not always winning his arguments, his voice was always heard, and by August 1789, he was one of the important figures involved in writing the Declaration of the Rights of Man. It seems to have been his belief that the French monarchy and government could adopt a similar system that he saw used by the British. After the Bastille was stormed, Mirabeau tried to indicate that this would lead to further violence and this should not be the direction that the revolution aims itself. However, his voice was not heard in these times and therefore he tried to plan for the creation of a ministry which could represent the common people of France. Mirabeau attempted to form an alliance with other individuals, such as the Duke of Orléans, Lafayette, and Necker. However, this was to no avail. Following the Women's March on Versailles, the Comte de Marc asked Mirabeau for his help on how the king should handle the situation. In response, Mirabeau drafted an entire plan whereby the king would accept these revolutionary changes and steps would be taken to establish a constitutional position between the monarchy and the people, somewhat similar to the British system, where many positions would be divided between ministers. The plan was ruined, however, when a decree was made on November 7, 1789, which prevented any assembly member to become a minister. By 1790, despite tension between the royalty and Mirabeau, the Comte de Marc was used as a communicator between the Queen and Mirabeau when he acted as her political advisor. Mirabeau also became a member of the Jacobin Club, however it is considered by many now that he was merely a member in name and that he actually saw them as an obstacle against returning the monarchy's political presence. He was later elected president of the club in late 1790. In this position, he played a role in lobbying for the sale of land owned by the church to help France financially, the works towards the abolition of slavery, and the requirements for citizens to become part of the National Guard. Soon after, Mirabeau, who represented the more moderate parts of the club, noticed opposition coming from the more radical party members, including Maximilien de Robespierre, who he tried to suppress on a few occasions. 
In the mid-1790s to 1791, he worked with the court and established many state papers, for which his debts were secretly paid by the king. His earlier failed alliances posed a threat now, but Necker was soon removed from his position, and although he challenged Lafayette, nothing more came of it at the time. He then advised the king to back away from politics and let the revolution carry itself out, hoping it would destroy itself from within due to all the opposing parties fighting. He later suggested that should this plan fail, Paris should be removed as the capital of France to diminish the revolutionary power, and that civil war could be considered for the purpose of saving the monarchy. Although the king initially opposed this idea, when further decrees were passed, he accepted it as a potential option. In early 1791, Mirabeau was made the president of the National Assembly, despite his health deteriorating. He held this position for two weeks, in which time it is said the king lost confidence in him despite his continued participation in debates, which gained him even more popularity with the citizens. Mirabeau eventually died on April 2, 1791 in Paris, with some attributing it to pericarditis, and others claiming that he may have been poisoned. After his death, he was considered a father of the revolution, for which he was buried in the Pantheon. However, in 1792, his secret communications with the king were discovered and he was branded by many as a traitor, leading the Jacobins to discredit him and having his body replaced by Marat in the Pantheon so that his could be buried anonymously in Clamart's graveyard. In summary, there are a few differences between Mirabeau's in-game representation and his real history. First, and this should be clear, he was not the mentor of the French Assassin Brotherhood, although he does mention in the game how this, on top of his other positions, truly weighed on him. For months, I have been wrangling the Brotherhood, the National Assembly, and the King. Taken all together, they have the political acumen of an especially stupid village council. I believe that excuses my appearance, young man. Second, although he was present at the meeting of the Estates General, he did not create any truce with another faction, as was represented in unity with Monsieur de Lassart, although this too was a great representation of the early stages of the revolution, which saw more compromise than the later years. Lastly, although some think that Mirabeau may have been poisoned, he was not killed by Pierre Belac due to his peace-seeking approach to dealing with the Templars. Aside from this and a few minor differences based in his exact political stance, Mirabeau was rather nicely depicted in Assassin's Creed Unity, mainly due to the fact that most of his scenes were part of the fictional Assassin vs. Templar story. However, it should be noted that these instances were also nicely tied in with his history, such as when Arnaud was sent to destroy some of his letters to the king, and later when his body was to be removed from the Pantheon, and therefore the Assassins needed to remove all of their artifacts from his burial site to hide their association. With that final fact, we have finished another episode of Assassin's Creed, The Real History. I hope you all enjoyed this video, and if you did, I highly recommend you try one of the Assassin's Creed games. Thank you all for watching. Please leave any suggestions for future characters, groups, events, or locations from any of the Assassin's Creed games that you'd like me to cover in the comment section below. Please rate, comment, and subscribe, and I look forward to seeing you all in a future historical episode.